And welcome everyone. This is Linda Bennett, your spiritual counselor and psychic host for Metaphysically Speaking. Today we are going to be talking about a topic that lots of you have been asking me to cover. I'm sort of bored with it, but nevertheless, it's going to be UFOs or unidentified flying objects. This does not mean little green men, little blue men, little purple men, little gray men. It means your experiences with either visually seeing a UFO or having some type of unidentified flying object experience. And that could be thought patterns coming to you. It could be sounds. It could be um, numerically tapped out. Numerically tapped out is what I'm saying. Yes, numerically tapped out tones. It could be a conversation with a being appearing to you. It could be an actual physical onboard experience. If you've noticed, we're not hearing much about people being abducted anymore. That was a 60s and 70s kind of phenomena before a lot of people realized that you have more than one lifetime and they have not all been on planet Earth. And when I hear people say, no, this is all there is. There isn't anything else anywhere. I say, well, look up in the sky. And how could you possibly think that? I was watching some show on astronomy the other day, and they've discovered that the way you can tell a live star is versus a dead star or a star the way it looked, I don't know how many light years ago, is the so-called dead stars or inactive or maybe very old stars just look stationary. The current stars or that were alive when we have been receiving the visualization through the telescopes is there's like a halo that goes from, say look at a, a Maltese cross which is perfectly even or a directional cross which is perfectly even north, south, east, west. And it, like a halo goes from the 12 o'clock to the nine and three o'clock position, and then from the nine and three down to the six o'clock position. And that's sort of like a glow. It sort of looks like one of the stars you might see on a Christmas card. And they can tell by measurements and however else they do things that that is, or was as we're receiving the light, a current star, meaning it is part of another solar system. And believe me, there are thousands of them up there. So if anybody wants to think that this is all there is, I think they need some psychiatric care because God did not create this entire gigantic universe for a teeny weeny weeny little planet. So if you've had any kind of experience, I would like to hear about it. And if you are not getting through on the show today, then please leave your question or your experience. Don't make it 50 miles because I don't have that much time to read. So condense it and let me know if you'd like us to have you contact us on a follow-up UFO show. Because if we get enough calls about this, you can either call my office at 727-736-4567 and leave your name and number and a brief description of what happened and whether or not you want to be called, that would be great. Or you can go on to metaspeak.com on Facebook or the web, okay? And you will find this show airing there. And if you're in the Sarasota, Florida area, you can hear the show on Saturdays and Sundays. I'm not sure what time they're going to be airing it. They've been airing it at 5 p.m. I think they're going to midnight because what football or baseball or some, some kind of ball season is coming on. And it's WTMY and it's 1280 a.m. So uh, I understand we've got a caller on the line already. Caller, first name and comment or question. Hey, Linda, my name is Adam. Um, Linda, uh, a pretty um, basic question, but one that always kind of gets me. We, we live in a culture of almost fear when it comes to, you know, a UFO phenomenon and things that we don't understand as, a, as, as humans. Do we have any idea why there would be UFOs, what the purpose of, you know, extraterrestrial beings or so? What do they want in oh, visiting this planet? That is a perfect question. Do you know why? Because it's the most basic reason why any of us are alive on a physical planet. 
other planetary systems, other solar systems, other galaxies are far older than we are. And they have always been here. And there are mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers and husbands and wives and cousins from other lifetimes. And they are called, some people call them the guardians. My experience with them was as the ambassadors. And actually, I lived a life as an ambassador. And they travel from planet to planet. And they get um, assigned a certain galaxy and in a certain planetary system that has life that would be considered higher and believe it or not it's considered higher forms of life here despite a lot of rotten behavior and so it is their job to oversee um, basic events on the planet if for instance a war is getting ready to start because some lunatic somewhere is ready to set off a nuclear weapon and that is karmically not supposed to happen they somehow manage to interfere. Either the switch won't flip, or the person gets preoccupied and totally forgets, or they suddenly have a heart attack and anybody else involved will have a heart attack. Something will go wrong and the event will not take place if it is not karmically ordained. If, um, and I just heard that foot and mouth disease is coming back, and there's a new tick disease that is coming back. Um, so different diseases are now cropping up and if they're premature in their cropping up or if they're not supposed to be happening, they will send a vibration down that makes it impossible for that disease to spread. So they act as guardians. They act to interfere with something that should not be taking place. If something should be taking place and there are too many people on the dark side, because don't forget, we're just thinking about physical people on this planet. We are forgetting about the people in the astral world who are positive and love us and negative and want to destroy the earth. We tend to forget that. We tend to think of that as science fiction. But if you watch the History Channel and History International, and they're talking about paranormal experiences, which I'm getting tired of watching these guys run around with these little meters saying, oh, there's a cold spot, there's a warm spot. Yeah, I mean, we know that already. Now do something else. Um, we forget that there are people on the dark side who want this planet destroyed and want to suck up as many good souls as possible for their power. And they try to interfere with that. If it is not your karma to be influenced by negativity, they will block the negativity. And it's also their job to report back to higher councils on more advanced planetary systems as to what's going on and what kind of interference needs to be conducted, um, what kind of energy they need, is there a specialist in doing something that they don't have on board. It's a very logical way of handling events on physical planets. And um, what I find fascinating is they've been here always. I've had dreams and astral projections where I've seen the planet in a gaseous form before it started in physical form because we know that everything that exists physically exists in the mind first. That would be the male aspect of God. That's the thought pattern, the seed, and that seed gets implanted in the female energy of God, which is the power to create and manifest. So they have existed here since the idea of creating this solar system and every other solar system um, was created. And they travel, they compare notes, they see what's happening on planet X versus planet Earth and planet Y per planet A and what mistakes did they make and what mistakes are being caused here and who's got a migraine headache and who has an excedrin. And they are very